Hey, do you want to build a stronger family, create a better life? Well, that's what Divorce with Heart is all about. It's a show where I guide you along your divorce and co-parenting journey using the heart's wisdom, intuition, and legal expertise. So sit back, take a deep breath, relax. My name is Gina DiPrima. Let's get started. Hey, thank you for joining me today. I, you know, I'm so glad that that intro says, uh, you know, take a deep breath, relax. Thank you for joining me. Cause I don't know about you, but I so needed to hear that. <laughs> I am having the craziest Monday so far. Um, so yeah, that was nice. It's nice to just be like, <sighs> let's just do this now. For the next hour, it's just going to be me and you. And we got a really super cool show um, planned for you today. I have a really special guest on. Her name is Ivy Rivera. And Ivy and I worked together um, a while back to really help her to get out of what was an absolutely awful relationship that she was in and a relationship in which everything she did, it just wasn't working. Um, so I'm going to jump more into that in a few minutes. But before I get there, um, you know, I just want to thank you again. I want to thank you for listening and I want to thank you for sharing, sharing and uh, commenting on the Divorce with Heart Facebook group. Um, everybody's starting to get active and I just love it. So I just want to say thank you. And if you're listening and you have not yet joined the group, then please do so. It's Divorce with Heart and that's a Facebook group. And um, the purpose of it is so that we can continue the conversation here and build community and support one another. I'm a firm believer that... Uh, happiness happiness starts in the home right and because it's it's where we have our most intimate relationships our learning experiences everything that's important in life starts there and we pass that on to our kids who then go out into the community into the neighborhood into their schools and so on and so forth so i'm i'm hoping you know that that's kind of one of the underlying roots of of the purpose in this divorce with heart is to help you to have a happier ha happier family you know a stronger family a happier home so that when you're going out there into the world you're you're presenting a peaceful vibe, right? Not this like angry, stressed out, overwhelmed, negative, angry vibe. And and of course, we all we all do that, right? From time to time, and I, myself included. Trust me. Um, but it's something to work toward, right? It's something to work for toward to just be happy and peaceful and have some acceptance. We talked about that last week, and there's just so much to say on that topic. Um, so that's really what this is about. I know that if you're listening, you are going through an extremely difficult time in your life, or you've been through the divorce and separation already, but you're still struggling because that's the nature of it. That's the nature of a broken heart, a broken relationship, and it affects you on so many, so many levels. So if you can find some inspiration and support here in this show, and it helps to uplift you, um, and then you're able to pass that on to your kids who take it out, like I said, into the community and the schools just by their vibe and, and their nature, then we're on the right track and we're doing the right thing. So I want to say thank you for being here and listening and contributing on the Facebook group. And one small request, just a small request would be if you could, and I know a lot of people might be listening in the car, but if you think of it, when you get a free moment, if you could just skip over to iTunes and leave your review or leave a rating for the show, because that's really what helps other people to find this. And, um, 
you know, that's the way I shop for everything, honestly. I look at comments, I look at reviews, I look at ratings, and if I believe what I'm reading, then I'll believe in the product and I'll take a chance. So that's really why I'm asking that you do that, because there's so many people out there that are hurting or in, you know, very similar situation that you may be in, but they'll never have the benefit of this show without your support, your comments, and your ratings. So I would really appreciate it if you could do that. And at any time you see anything on Facebook or Instagram or wherever it may be, always, 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 please feel free to share it with anyone that you think could benefit. Um, because that's what we're about here, right? We're, we're all about trying to raise the vibe and change the paradigm of divorce. And I want to also remind you that we are live today. We're live every Monday at 1 o'clock, and there's a call-in number. If you just want to call in, say hi, tell me how you're doing, anything at all, you know, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to connect with you. And that number, again, is 1-760-456-7277. So give us a call uh, if you're able to and if you're catching us here today live. Now, Ivy, Ivy is, she's come to be one of my one of my good friends. But at first, um, you know, it was more of a working relationship. I believe Ivy first uh, was introduced to me perhaps because of the relationship she was in. I can't recall exactly, but I know that we tried to do things on, on a legal level. And, you know, we were just... It was like banging our head against the wall. And then one day I said to her, you know, let's let's look at this different. Let's look at this different. Let's try to use the power of the universe, right? Forces unseen, things that we know are there, but uh, maybe don't always understand or deny from ourselves. But I said, let's just try it. Let's just try it. And I knew that she would be receptive to this because Ivy is a medium. She runs the Ivy League Psychic Academy here in Buffalo, New York, where she teaches people really worldwide because she offers it through um, online classes. But she teaches people all over the world about how to develop their intuition, their mediumship skills, and all sorts of really cool stuff like that. So, So I knew when I was talking to her that this would be an idea that she would embrace. And so... So that's what we did. And I want to tell you that, you know, in my opinion, I think it had remarkable results and results that we just would not have been able to achieve any other way. So without any further ado, let's bring Ivy on. I hope that she's connected now. Ivy, are you there? I am here. How are you, Tina? Hi. Hi. Good. Hi. Thanks for being so here. Funny. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Oh, good. And I'm glad that you were able to connect and and join us. So did you hear? I, I gave a little background and I did mention, you know, that you were in a very difficult relationship that was um, pretty abusive, right? And in my opinion, knowing a little more of your story, I would also say that he was very narcissistic. Would you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. I did hear um, your intro, and it it really was life-changing to bring you in for this. I believe that the universe led me to you and led you to me um, so that I could get the Aww. help that I needed. And while I am strong in my intuitive abilities and energy control and things like this, um, when you are dealing with someone sociopathic and narcissist, And as an empath, we do attract those. When you're dealing with something Mm -hmm. like that, it's repetitive, and you get tied up in the legal system with it, it can be overwhelming. And you came at it from a different perspective than anyone else had. Everyone was saying the same thing about how to handle it. You came at it from an energetic perspective, which was something I understood. I understand law of attraction, manifestation, um, energy. So um, finally, once and for all, we were able to 
nip it in the bud. And yes, it was a lot of narcissism. Um, primarily, it was stalking and things like this. Yeah. How long were you in that relationship? Just so we can give our listeners a sense of really how difficult it was and how how entangled you are. Like, I just get this vision in my mind. It was like, he just had like his claws in you, you know? <laughs> well, how long it was really that? Wasn't, yeah, that was the interesting thing. It really wasn't even that long. It had been just a few months when he did really dig in his claws because he tried to do everything. He was an overgiver. He was an overachiever. He was there for me way too much. He wanted to have his hands mm -hmm. in everything and help with everything. And that's how mm -hmm. he ended up getting some control. And during that time, he was able to sneak in and get passwords and things like that. So it became difficult to pull out. I saw the warning signs, um, not to the extent that I should have early on, and I pulled out. But when apologies... Right. Made. He said that he was in anger management. I watched him drive off to appointments that he never went to. I gave it another try, and that's when it really got very, very dangerously bad. So all yeah. together went on over the course of, um, I would say, about two years. But there was a large gap in between where we were not together, and I was not hearing apologies. Right, However, and that's really during, why even during that time. Yeah, but during that time, he kept dragging me into court. He would say to me, the only right. way I'm going to get to see you is in court. So he would make false accusations. So even though I yep. wasn't with him, he was feeling like in his sociopathic brain that we were still together because yeah. he would get to see me and have control in that setting until you stepped in. Right. And and that's that's the whole claw thing. Right. And then that's why I call this. How do you get your ex or even your soon to be ex to just stop interfering with your life? Because that's what he was doing. He just wouldn't he wouldn't let it go. And it was scary and and it was violent. And talk about gaslighting. Um, he was doing that. I remember all the time. Like, what about the keys? Do you remember that there was something with the keys? Do you mind sharing that what he was doing? I had to hide an extra set of keys at all times. So he would mm -hmm. um, he would take my keys. I believe he had made copies of keys. So he would be breaking into my business. Sometimes he was just mm -hmm. breaking the lock. Um, he would mm -hmm. also, it wasn't just the keys. He would take my things, important things to me, and he would hide them. Yes. Make me think that they were lost. And as mm -hmm. a psychic, I could see this going on, but to make an accusation like that against someone you're trying to trust, you're trying to love, you're watching this person mm -hmm. drive off to so-called therapy. They're in anger management. He's doing pretty good for, for months on, at a time. And then to see, I could psychically see him lying and, and hiding my things in order to be the hero, in order yes. to be able to have these objects surface, resurface. I found this for you. I've come to your rescue yet again. And yes, it would be important thing. Um, mm -hmm. Glass keys, you know, documents, passwords, accounts that he would say were messed up that I had to have for advertising. And then all of a sudden he would come to the rescue. Well, I found out after the fact that he had transferred all those things into his name and his power. He had manipulated all of those accounts. So... There were many, many things like that going on so that even when it looked like he was acting normal or um, improving upon him, himself and his control, he was manipulating at all times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is like the quintessential idea of gaslighting because you're probably like, I'm going crazy. I just had this here. Where is it? And then all of a sudden it just appears, you know, <laughs> make you right. think you're losing your mind. Right. So, well, and I know this was so difficult, sure. so right. difficult. How did it affect you? And because you're a business owner, you're trying to move on with your life. You're trying to establish your business. I mean, how did being in this type of situation when he was like that and just holding you like that and almost, you know, just not letting you go, how did that affect you in your business and financially? Well, I, you know, I will be honest that he was doing everything in his power to drain everything, to create false documents and run them on social media, to contact other people um, who were maybe 
want to be competitors of mine and to get people to go up against me. He would also befriend my closest people, whether they be clients or students, he would befriend them. And then he would slowly try to get them into the fold. He was trying Mm -hmm. to bring other people into the business that I had not permitted. And um, he was trying to take it over and make himself look as though he had started the business and things like this. So um, the way that it, it really affected me in all honesty I believe that I was supposed to be there when I was there. I believe that I was protected by a higher calling, by a higher source. And I understand that it was part of my karmic contract to live some of this out. So Mm -hmm. I, I clung to that the entire time. But when it came time for me to leave, when I knew that he had really gone over to the dark side, that there was no way that he was ever going to step up and be any kind of a partner, this was just abuse and darkness, and it was time for me to leave, and I believe the universe told me to go, only until then would I have really been able to completely walk away from it. So when Mm -hmm. I tried to do that, I was stuck. It took four months of planning and procedure with police escort to get out. And it, mm-hmm. it, I think he wanted it to take far more of a, a toll than it ever did on my business. Surprisingly mm-hmm. so, I mean, my, my business continued to do well because regardless of associating with him, which I did from a place of pure love, um, my business mm-hmm. was good and of the light and it continued to grow there were many people though who felt that he was a shadow element in the business and didn't want to come around but that Mm -hmm. sort of is the business regardless there are always people battling their darkness so i don't think it's a terrible toll but what's interesting to me is, I mean, you, because of your background and being an empath, I mean, you you already know so much about this world and, you know, karmic con- connections and relationship cords. But even with all of your knowledge, right, which I would say the majority of people don't yet have, right, it was still right. extremely difficult for you to live your daily life. It was right? because of the because of the stress. Yeah, yeah that's what I want to tell you. And the mm-hmm. constant the constant threat. The constant threat to me physically, mentally, emotionally, financially. He was coming at it from all angles. And it did become um absolutely draining. If I if I were to say anything to him about something that was inappropriate or this isn't working for me. He would take my phone. He would take my keys. He would take my purse. He would take my credit cards. He stole tax documents. I'm still recouping from, um, he would break into my business. I was going to be punished to the full extent for speaking yeah. out. That's right. He was trying to even bring actions against you and get orders of protection against you, as I recall, which, you know, it's it's classic sociopathic, narcissistic abuse, really. Right. And And remember, when he couldn't get those, he created fake documents that looked like real documents from court and posted them all over social media, saying that he had restraining orders and such against me, even though he lost in court. Yes. Well, yeah, and we'll get to that because that was after we got in and we, you know, cleared cleared the energy field and sent some healing. That's right. We had our court appearance after that, and uh, lo and behold, he didn't show up. So, Hello and behold. case dismissed. Yes. What'd you say? I'm sorry, you're cutting out just I a bit. I, I don't think. Imagine that that he that he did not show up, and that was such a powerful. Thing that we did there, mostly really me just being there to assist. I remember us doing this almost um, in a ceremony type fashion and you leading it and you occasionally asking me questions. What were my right. intentions? What am I trying to manifest uh, during mm-hmm. this time? And you took such power and control over the energy of the situation in the same way that I would give someone a healing 
or a reading giving them direction, and you turn the entire situation around, and it was instantaneous. Oh, that's just, well, that was the intention, right? And I know not everybody listening probably has a full command of what we're talking about, but you mentioned because you're an empath and you know I'm an empath, which is what has enabled me to help you and do this. And how would you explain that? How would you define that, just being an empath? Empathic ability is considered a disorder, in the medical community and the scientific community. It's largely connected to other disorders um, like bipolar, ADD, OCD, um, depression, things like this. It's it's considered almost like an anxiety. However, in the spiritual community, we consider empathic ability a gift. Empathic ability empowers the individual who has it. There are four different levels defined so far. So especially when you hit the third and the fourth level, which Gina, you and I probably hit as kids. So when Mm -hmm. you hit the third and the fourth level with your empathic ability, you become incredibly in tune to other people's energy. You can feel what they're feeling. You can telepathically think what they're thinking. You may not know what is yours and what is others. So it can Mm -hmm. create identity confusion, sickness, phantom illnesses, and problems. It can create tremendous energy drains, anxiety and depression, sleep disturbances, things like this. Um, Typically, people who have it, they lose the ability to read and write completely somewhere in elementary school and have to go get it back. These are, um, along with chronic migraines, these are the most common, like, physical symptoms that you're going to see. The other flip side on this, though, when we are empowered to use it, not just victims to it, when we're empowered to use it, we're energy manipulators. So we can Mm -hmm. go into situations and prevent negative from happening. We can go into situations, even like my relationship with him, and create healing, show the Mm -hmm. light display to people how it needs to be done for the best of the universe. We can remove disease. We can um, control electronics. There are all kinds of things we can do with it. But empaths are the number one group research shows to attract narcissists and sociopaths. Mm -hmm. Sure, because we're we're energy sponges. (laughs) So, you know, I think that's why. And, you know, there's been a lot of science that started to come out to really validate some of this. But so what we did, what Ivy and I did was, like I said, we were involved first because it was legal, but it just wasn't going anywhere. I mean, and I knew that and she knew that. And and I'm glad, Ivy, that you said, you know, everybody kept telling you the same thing because that's what happens. And sometimes the legal system is just not the answer sometimes. Sometimes you need to get in there and you need to clear out some bad energy and send some healing so then you can move forward. Then maybe the the legal system will, will work. And up until the time that Ivy and I did this, um, I was actually doing this behind the scenes for my clients. And you know, nine out of 10 times, what happened was is a very contentious case on the eve of trial would settle. Um, so I, th- I know that it works. And what, what we did really is, is we got into what I call it, you know, well, let me back up. You know, there's this idea that we all have an energy body. And this actually was somewhat proven back in the 90s by a scientist named Vladimir Poponin, um, where he actually, I mean, it's pretty complicated, but he he removed DNA from photons and then the photons still arranged themselves as though they were DNA. And no matter how much he disrupted the photons, photons are like light, um, they would still rearrange. And this is the whole reason why when a person might enter a room and they're feeling like, oh, there's like bad vibes here, or there was just an argument here or, you know, something like that. It's because the bad energy remains, you know, and it's that energy body that remains. And so that's really kind of where the healing that Ivy Ivy and I did, like kind of where it starts. It starts with the idea that there's this energy body and this person that she was with, right, obviously, like we all do, has this energy body. And it starts with the idea that, um, 
you can, um, what I call more or less like energy jumping, that's just my, my phrase, I guess, is you can energy jump. You can jump into the energy body of somebody else and figure out what's going on and be guided. You know, I always have to do like a prayer. I mean, I have to protect myself, but be guided by a source that is of light and of higher than than you to elevate the situation to something that is more of a higher vibration, not dark, right? And and it's exactly. also just taking advantage of of the fact that you know, there is, everything is energy. Everything all around us is energy. And just because we can't see it or maybe don't completely understand it, it doesn't mean that it's not there. I mean, just like gravity or the internet. I don't know. I don't know how exactly how those things work. <laughs> I'm not a scientist, <laughs> but I know that it's there, right? I believe it and I know that it's there. And you it's the same thing with this, like... turn on after you charge it. Yes. We're yeah, trying. exactly. So, so when, when I've been I did this healing, we're just taking advantage of these things that, I mean, I almost want to call them basic facts because that's the way that we consider it almost, right? Just like it is gravity or just like it is something else. And I'll tell you that that there's also been science around that. Um, it started off in the 50s. There was a scientist out of Russia, Nikola Kozarev, and he discovered torsion fields and Basically, long story short, I mean, torsion fields is basically the universal energy. It's it's what the great philosophers were talking about. It's what they talk about in the Vedic scriptures of like prana and akasha and chi. So so it's there, and science is starting to to recognize that. Maybe not so much mainstream science because I mean, it's not too hard to be able to to see the ramifications of this. You know, there goes the pharma, the pharmaceutical industry if everybody starts realizing ah, the actual power yeah. that they have, right? Oh, yeah, to There's heal themselves. The Absolutely. I, and I'll tell you, there was another study, and I don't want to get too bogged down in this, but um, there was a Dr. Benor who did a meta-analysis um, using these same principles. And there was 191 studies where they were trying to um, heal people, and they were like double-blind studies. So the empath or the healer was set up to heal somebody else. Now, the the person being healed didn't know, and neither did the empath or the healer. Okay, so it was like a double-blind study. And it was all across the board, 191 of them. And the results were pretty amazing because there was 64% of the people that participated in that had absolute profound healing results. Not just a little bit of healing, but profound healing. So it's like, you know, this stuff is real. It's very real. It's around us all the time. And I think it's important um, that I don't know that that people start taking notice of it because it might just be what you need in order to move things forward on the outside. And our our power, like our human consciousness, is just so, so strong that, you know, just like you said when you were talking about empaths and electronics and things like that, just mass human consciousness when it's all happening at the same time, there's been studies that have shown that mass human consciousness can affect computers. Um, there was a huge study right after um, September 11th came down, and and a few are a few more after that. And actually, that was out of Princeton. So so this is real stuff. So. It is. You know, and even Einstein, by the way, even Einstein said that this is not ancient superstition. He even recognized that. He said it's not ancient superstition that, you know, the pendulum, which is what you and I use specifically, that what it does is it, it helps to show reaction of the nervous system to factors unseen. That's basically what Einstein said way back when. And now we know the factors unseen are universal source energy, the torsion fields, you know, it's, it's what's happening. It's so, not a philosophy. It is not a philosophy. This isn't, this isn't an airy fairy type of wishing and wanting. This is real. And one of the easiest ways for the average Joe who's never worked with energy before, one of the easiest ways for people to start 
seeing for themselves that this is true is by owning their own energy. So if you spent a whole day being determined to be mindful, to own your energy throughout the day when you went to the store, when you were driving in traffic, when you went to work, when you were interacting with your loved ones and friends, when you do this, you start to see that you can manipulate a room, the traffic, yeah. others around you, a parking spot, the mm -hmm. time clock, everything, everything. You can go into a toxic, horrible meeting at work and you can say, instead of just going with the flow or being washed over, I am going to own my energy I am going in there with a vision of what I want to see happen in here. I am bringing positive energy. I am radiating positive energy. I'm sending light out to the entire room to every individual in here. Watch how that meeting doesn't go the way it normally does every week. Watch. It's very, very oh, simple. Yeah. Once, yep. once you learn to manipulate a couple basic situations, you work your way up from there. And so you can do things like, you know, mess with technology, remove disease, things like this. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, I I do it all the time. And, you know, up until very, very recently, like I said, it was mostly behind the scenes. And I'll tell you, I just did it a couple of weeks ago before a very important court appearance. And even this morning before I went to court. And I'll tell you what, the times that I do it and I put my mind on it and I sent and I set the right energy and I clear, I clear the energy of the courtroom and everybody involved. And I and I ask that there be a result that is, you know, in the highest and best for all involved, because I don't know exactly what's best for everybody. And, and I don't pretend to, but that's the prayer and the hope. Um, it's amazing. It's just amazing how things then unfold. So, yes, um, I was, I was I know, going to pick back off of you saying that earlier when when things in my situation were just so stuck. All the police are saying the same thing, that I'm I'm in more danger to get a restraining order because once it expires, because he used things like strangulation, they changed the laws against that a few years ago. So they put him in a much more dangerous category. So they were afraid mm -hmm. that. I was going to get murdered when the restraining order went off. So there, so all the police, it didn't matter what district, they're all telling me to knock at the restraining order. They were, they were, it was the same situation in court repeatedly with him dragging me in with false accusations to try to get an opportunity to see me or slander my name. I was told the mm -hmm. same thing repeatedly. There was, there were no charges ever against me. He never won, but they also weren't defending me. It was like I was chasing my tail. Someone mm -hmm. did need to step in aside from my own self. I needed the power of, I think you and I to go in there collectively and you are a powerful, um, being in energy manipulation, when you cleared and you set a, a higher intention for the best good and true healing, everything was jolted loose and allowed for change, for growth. He wasn't even allowed in the, he didn't even show up to that last attempt that he no. made. You know, he wasn't That's right. allowed on the property. That is the universe at work. And it and it officially gave me the full upper hand through the court system. So right. it had to happen eventually. But it would not have necessarily if we didn't step in and take charge of the energy. Right. Oh, I don't think so. Because it was so thick and it had such a hold. I think, you know, and that happens sometimes. You just, you have to get at it because... There are karmic roots. You know, there is more at play than what we may notice. And there certainly was in your case. I mean, I know when I do this, I, I kind of enter this bit of an altered state of consciousness where I really get into feeling the person. But I, I remember that, I mean, I felt so dark and so lost and so alone. Like he was really in some serious pain. And I was having vivid memories of, you know, I wouldn't say my life because at the time I was him, right? As a child. And, you know, I just want to make it clear. It's, it's not like we just helped and went in and cleared the stuff, you know, for your sake, for Ivy's sake. But together, we sent him a lot of love and healing and um, helped to, you know, 
I guess, let, get him to let go of some of that energy that he was carrying around. Do you remember that? That part of because- it? Because... I do. I remember your I remember your face changing. I remember you look like someone else. I remember you reaching a point of vomiting. I remember things falling <laughs> off the walls. I remember tapping, <laughs> you know, weird noises throughout the place. I mean, it was it was very very similar to an exorcism or a full exorcism. It was it was due to the fact that yes, we wanted to bring him healing because regardless of everything he did, I never stopped loving him I had always come to him from a place of love the fact that he's that far lost is just something I cannot allow in my life or my business but he was absolutely uh, bound to me and I to him through cords I believe in past life connection I believe in karmic mm-hmm. contracts I believe mm-hmm. in um, soulmate and twin flame connections all of these things make it harder. You know, I do a class here at the Ivy League Academy called Relationship Boundaries and Cord Cutting. And it's largely based on what we did that night, you and I, Gina. And I do another one for people with empathic ability to prevent these types of problems. It's called Empathic Needs, to be able to understand how your energy works as an empath. But with this Thing that we did that night, it was based on the fact that he and I did have many past lives together. We were also astrologically perfectly charted together. There was a small sliver of compatibility that I had in my astrological chart, and he fit perfectly into that. You could see death points in an astrological chart. I rescued him from many death points when you line mm-hmm. the charts up together. This mm-hmm. was, without a doubt, towards and ancient. And it was just that this time it was not working out well. There are a lot of other factors I won't get into as to why it wasn't working out well, but ultimately his free will was not taking charge. He was not getting self-control. So Mm -hmm. when it was time for me to go, he could not live with that result. That was not an option. So he felt it physically, mentally, emotionally, And he said, you will either be with me or your life is going to end and I'm going to end it and I'm going to destroy you. He would say this openly all the time. So that, yeah, that right there is what we were trying to bring healing to because his pain was real, mind you. And he had dealt with a lot of abuse in his childhood and we, there was past life trauma there. And it's not easy to lose a twin flame. It's not easy to lose a soulmate. It's not easy to have cords cut or to have someone walk away from you. But it is what it is. And I really, really believe that, that in these situations that really just seem to have all these different layers that are, are that are just so difficult that just are not resolving themselves and can go on and on even for you know for years i really believe that those are most certainly the situations where you've got to look at it from another perspective because there's something else at play and like i said i've done it with a lot of my cases in the past and as you were talking one came to mind i mean this was so contentious we were on the eve of a trial and, um, you know, I went in there and and I did find that there was a relationship at play from the past, like a brother sister thing and and went in and cleared it, cleared it out, did some balancing. And, yeah, we settled the case. <laughs> Everybody was able to move on. So I just hey, think, that's... again, yeah, I, I, these kinds of things, when they get to this level, especially, you really got to look and say, what is the energy? What is the universe? Um, right. What What is the lesson here? You know, how can I use the universe and use energy and how can I heal the whole situation, you know, for everybody's sake, not even just, you know, your own. So it's not even coming from a place of being selfish. It's really all of it is coming from a place of love. And um, with that, we got to take a quick break. And when we come back, um, let's talk a little more about your your class and relationship cords. I'd love to. Sound good? Wonderful. Let's take a break. Hey there, it's Gina. 
If you like what you hear, did you know that you can get even deeper and closer to your heart's wisdom and receive personal one-on-one guidance by working with me virtually? If you're sick of drowning in frustration and overwhelm and ready to flow through your divorce and co-parenting challenges, then go to my website and book a call with me. That's deprimalaw.com. D-E-P-R-I-M-A law.com. Or you can find me on Facebook at Deprima Law. Talk to you soon. Some of you have questions about your partnership, marriage, or co-parenting situation. I'm here for you. Give me a call in today's live episode by dialing the U.S. number 1-760-456-7277. That's 1-760-456-7277. Talk to you soon. All right, we're back. Thank you for being Uh here. And if you're just tuning in, we've got Ivy Rivera on the line with us today. And I want to just also mention a correction. My my little break um, commercial there says that if you want to book a call with me, go to my website. And you can certainly go to my website, but really what you're going to find is a lot of the legal stuff. A better way to book a call with me if you're interested in diving deeper into, you know, clearing the energy around your situation and getting clear and and finding, you know, the strength and the courage and all the things that I talk about in being, you know, the, the traits of a warrior of peace. If you want to work with me on that level, a better website to go to would be doorwaytoheal.com. That's D-O-O-R-W-A-Y-T-O-H-E-A-L.com, doorwaytoheal.com. Dot com. So just wanted to make that correction. I got to go in and, and fix that. <laughs> um, but so what Ivy and I were doing that night in particular was I was using the pendulum, which I want to also just point out that using dousing and a pendulum to kind of find things and use the energy of the universe is, is one of the oldest, uh, most ancient forms of, I guess you want to call it like technology or science. And it, it dates back to like when we first started the written word and water itself, because that's how, how people did it. They used dowsing to go out and find water and they were finding water by using the, this universal energy and, and the dousing rod. So that's what we did. And uh, we just used a pendulum and, again, went in and, and looked at the energy of the situation. And, of course, there's a lot of details that go into it, but it's really so specific to each person in each situation that I just wanted to give you an overview here. Um, and relationship cords, Ivy, tell us something about that. <laughs> mm. So in, in the one class that I, that I have, again, these classes are available internationally. Um, it's called Relationship Boundaries and Cord Cutting. And I designed that because not only my own experience uh, was dragged out for far longer than it needed to be because I wasn't using the proper skills as early as I should have, uh, but I have many, many clients. So as a psychic medium, the number one question, the biggest amount, you know, bookings that you have are based on relationships. And I saw this so many times over. I thought people need to have these tools. You should not have to pay someone to go help you through these situations. We should all be able to understand at a basic level what the difference is between a first time encounter with another human being um, versus Mm -hmm an encounter where there are cords, past life connections, karmic connections, soulmate connections, twin flames, things like this. So when you have all of that history, you can have what we call cords connected between you and the other person. Now, you can be married for 25 plus years to someone that you don't have history with, You may have loved them dearly, but if you divorce, you could go your separate ways and really feel nothing. 
even after an extended period of time. However, people get into relationships that are even very, very brief. Typically within the first two weeks, you start to wonder what's wrong with you. You can get in very early on. You would automatically feel the cords. What they would feel like physically, mentally, emotionally is this. First of all, you can sense almost uh, an obsession between you and the other person with each other. There's an incredible drive, a magnetism, a need to be near each other, where when you're physically apart, you can experience illness, flu-like symptoms, a drop in body temperature. If there's an actual breakup, you can literally shake physically, have terrible nightmares, headaches. You can't really be very far away from this person without experiencing some kind of backlash. And part of the reason it continues to happen is because there are cords that make it easy for the other person to tug and pull at you. Mm -hmm. They may be doing this involuntarily, or they may be doing it voluntarily. It depends on how educated they are. But if they pull and tug at that cord, they're pulling and tugging at you energetically. Therefore, they'll show up in your dreams. They'll show up constantly in your thoughts. Humans are incredibly susceptible susceptible to manipulation from spirits mm-hmm. and other humans, okay, who are spirits. It's all energy. So as they're pulling and tugging at you, you would feel as though you can't get free. You don't understand why your thoughts continuously go back over to this person that you had logically decided was not healthy or good for you. And this person can be living overseas. You can have 10, 15 years of distance between you. You would also feel whenever they're going through something dramatic in their life, whether it be tragic or if they're moving on, anything like that, you would automatically feel it. The biggest opportunity for the cords to um, really act up is at night through dreams. So you would wonder a lot, almost if this person asked to travel to you or something like that. Um, Basically, what needs to happen with that is uh, an analysis, and I do take it very seriously. I don't encourage people to just willy-nilly be cutting cords everywhere, but no, the, yeah. same, the same as this would work with a sugar addiction, smoking, porn addiction. This works with everything. My, my clients use this for everything, but the way that you, we do take it very carefully with another person. We want to look at the contract. We want to understand why these two people were brought together. Like you said earlier, what are the lessons? What are the lessons? But if you are being put in a toxic situation that is no longer beneficial to you, like I was when I knew he was not going to do the work, he was lying about driving off to therapy. None of this was actually happening. It was going nowhere. It was time to go. And what you need to do is first forgive the person. We need to understand we cannot carry bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, as hard as that's going to be. You cannot carry that in your energy field and in your heart because it blocks your prosperity. So what you're And it keeps you tied, do, right? Sorry to interrupt, but tied. it also keeps you tied right. to that person. I mean, it keeps the cord there, really, in a lot of ways. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Amen, right? So we have to understand that, that every day you may need to do this multiple times throughout the day. But when is something negative like that pops into your head, what they did to you, you need to visualize the person. You need to send them forgiveness and say, thank you for the lessons that I learned. You send them off in light and love to go learn, Okay and they're no longer in your energy field, then you cut the cords. So it's a whole process that we teach in the class. But this ensures that you are also enabling yourself to learn any additional lessons that was the whole point of coming together that maybe you're not going to be able to learn with this person. So one of the things I have them do is sign off on a contract, the original contract between the two, and they sign on to a new contract. And Mm -hmm. when you sign on to that new contract, you're saying, if there is any unfinished business that I was supposed to learn with this person, I'm trusting in the universe to provide me with another way to learn it. Bingo. And it happens to you. Right, right. Or just, it's a growth point, really. Sometimes I like to think of it better like that growth point instead of learning, because learning, I don't know, just 
feels hard to me, <laughs> you know, it but is. it's the same, yeah, that's same awesome. idea, same idea. Yeah. And, and I think it's important too, once you cut that cord, you need to go and you need to heal yourself or you're going to have a void there, which then just another cord can just as easily attach on. I mean, it's, and that's why I really recommend that people do that really with somebody who is very familiar and knows what they're doing and is a professional and can really get that healing in there. Um, so anyhow, we are almost at the end of the hour, I believe. And I just wanted people to know where they could find you as well, Ivy, in case they were interested in taking any of your classes. You want to go ahead and share your information? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you guys can find me on Facebook at Ivy Angela Rivera. There's also a page on Facebook for the Ivy League Psychic Academy. You can find me at Ivy Rivera Psychic Medium.com is the website. And for classes, it's Ivy League Psychic Academy.com. Perfect. Thank you for that. And and you are in our Divorce with Heart Facebook group, right? I'm pretty yeah. sure you're in that. So people could also, that. you know, reach you there as well. And this was fun. I'm glad that you were here today to to join us. And if anybody has any questions after you listen to this broadcast, you know, on the podcast, feel free to post it, you know, feel free to post it in the group. You can send me an email if you want. The email address for the show is divorcewheart at gmail.com. So it's basically like divorce with heart, but it's just a W, divorcewheart at gmail.com. And uh, I'd be happy to try to answer it. And like I said, Ivy's there too. So I'm sure that Ivy would do her best to respond as well, because uh, that's just Absolutely. the kind of person she is, <laughs> right? Absolutely, yes. Gina, yeah. thank you so much for the healing that you brought and that you Aww. continue to bring to people. I, I think what you're doing is um, really taking, taking this movement up to the next level. And um, we all appreciate you stepping out and being honest about your abilities and the way to really get this done, to spread light and love to the, to the universe and bring true healing. Thank you very much. And even today was very healing for me. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you for, for being my, what do I want to call it, like my first victim, <laughs> for lack you're, of a better word, you know. <laughs> you're getting, you're getting pig. No, you know what a better word is? My first patient. How about that? You were my first patient. <laughs> That's a better word. You know, and I'm glad that it worked. And it's still holding strong today, too, right? I mean, we did this a few years ago. I forgot to ask you that, but it's still good today. Um, it there? is. There's Can been a lot see? of, yeah, yeah um, really, really like a, almost like a binding. Like a, one of the most important things that you said was, uh, get his attention off of her, whether it has to go on wherever it goes, go to somebody else, go elsewhere, just go elsewhere, wherever it belongs, but get the attention off of her. And one of uh. my requests was that he stop seeing things in such a hateful way, but through more loving eyes. And um, I think that any uh, steps maybe he's made in the right direction were absolutely because of that coming from the darkness a little bit. And um, I've been, um, yeah, really far less harassed. Definitely yeah. no, more court, no more police. And um, yeah, I was able to build up <laughs> yeah. my security again. I'm free. Yeah. I love it. It's so beautiful. You're free. That's awesome. And that's what it's about. You're free. You're whole, right? You're feeling stronger and able to get out there now and really offer the world everything that you have. Because when you're stressed and under that kind of... Um, uh, pressure in the relationship, you know, it compromises who you are in the world. And that's just not fair to the rest of us, <laughs> right? Who need you? Because you exactly. wouldn't be here if we didn't need you. <laughs> that's what I tell my kids cannot, all the time. We, cannot let the, we can't allow the dark energies to take the light out. We cannot. So we give as yeah. much love as we can. And when we have to walk away, that's what we do. And we keep shining. And we all need yeah. to support each other in that in a real way. Talking is not enough. It's, it's yeah. energy. Yeah. It is energy. It's all energy. So thank you so much again. This is Ivy Rivera, and um, you can find her in the group and on her website if you wanted to take some of her classes, which she is really just, they're amazing. I've taken some myself. 
And um, again, if you want to reach out to me and work together, if it's a legal capacity, then certainly us. Go to my website at dpremalaw.com. But if you'd like to look at your situation from a different angle, go to doorwaytoheal.com. That's doorwaytoheal.com. And uh, have a great week. Can't wait to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Come back next week and be sure to visit my website at deprimalaw.com to book a call. Or let's connect on Facebook at Law, where you can join my group for more support. Please remember that the information shared is for general and entertainment purposes only, and that by calling in or messaging me, we are not creating an attorney-client relationship, and my advice is not intended to be legal advice. For specific legal advice, please contact a lawyer in your jurisdiction. This show is brought to you by InflowRadio.com the best curated talk radio network for personal development, wellness, spirituality, and conscious business.